Our Earth is home to countless plant and animal species, all of which have a limited lifespan and are bound to die. Yet these species have existed for several thousands of years. That's because living organisms can reproduce. That is, they give rise to offspring, which in turn grow and reproduce their own offspring of the same kind. This ensures survival of the species generation after generation. In living organisms, we see two types of reproduction, sexual and asexual. In sexual reproduction, a gamete from the male parent fuses with a gamete from the female parent to form a zygote. However, in asexual reproduction, the organism or the parent cell divides to give rise to morphologically and genetically identical organisms called clones. Asexual reproduction, commonly seen in protists, monirans and fungi, is of many different types. The amoeba, for instance, reproduces by binary fission, where the parent cell divides into two halves and each half develops into a daughter cell. Likewise, bacteria too reproduce through binary fission. Yeast, on the other hand, reproduces through budding, where the parent cell produces small buds through mitosis. These buds initially remain attached to the parent cell and then separate to develop into new organisms. While yeast reproduces through budding, other members of the fungi kingdom, such as penicillium, reproduce through conida, a special asexual reproductive structure. Apart from fungi, we also see asexual reproductive structures in certain members of kingdom animalia. In the case of hydra, buds which develop on the parent body serve as a means of reproduction. Likewise, the sponge produces internal buds called gamules that aid in asexual reproduction. Apart from single-celled organisms and animals, asexual reproduction is also seen in simple plants such as algae, as well as in certain higher plants such as potato. For instance, Chlamydomonas, a type of algae, develops zoospores which later mature into new plants. However, during unfavorable conditions, Chlamydomonas, as well as other types of fungi and algae, undergo sexual reproduction. In higher plants, asexual reproduction, commonly known as vegetative propagation, takes place through vegetative propagules, specialized structures which emerge from different parts of the plant. For instance, the stem of a potato plant is dotted with buds known as eyes, which later germinate into new plants. Whereas in a ginger plant, modified stems or rhizomes having nodes and buds act as a means of vegetative propagation. While the buds develop into a new ginger plant, the nodes of the rhizome give way to adventitious roots which help in the absorption of water and minerals from the soil. Bryophyllum, on the other hand, have notches on the margin of their leaves that give rise to adventitious buds that fall off and later germinate into new plantlets. Apart from buds and nodes, runners, Suckers, offsets and bulbs are other examples of vegetative propagules in plants. Interestingly, farmers and gardeners make full use of vegetative propagation for commercial cultivation of various plants including strawberry, potatoes and ginger. Vegetative propagation, however, can turn into a problem in certain cases like the fishermen of Bengal have discovered. 
water hyacinth, an aquatic plant with a phenomenal rate of vegetative propagation, is choking the Bay of Bengal and killing millions of fish, thereby ruining the livelihood of the fishing community. Asexual reproduction, an important biological process that ensures continuity of life, occurs differently in different organisms.